All right, let's talk about it. I'm huge on smartwatches. By the way, my name is CJ. This is CJ Knows Tech, where I love to talk tech and anything creative. We're talking smartwatches. We're talking the Apple Watch Series 4, which is on my wrist, and I almost refuse to take it off, versus the Galaxy Watch from Samsung, which is their latest smartwatch, released this year, as well as the Apple Watch Series 4. That's why it's only right we put them head to head. Now, for context, this is the 46 millimeter version of the Samsung Galaxy Watch. This is the 40 millimeter aluminum version of the Apple Watch. I had the 44 millimeter gold stainless steel Milanese bad boy of the Apple Watch, but I had the 40 millimeter aluminum first and fell in love with this one before I received the stainless steel one and the weight of the stainless steel as well as the price tag was a deterrent when I was already happy and accustomed to this 40 millimeter aluminum. I was happy with this. This whole setup right here with the sport loop, super light, love it. Stainless steel went back. Now, for proper context, for the people who are looking at the Galaxy Watch, the 46 millimeter, you want something equivalent, you want that big bulky heavy watch, I would say that the stainless steel 44 millimeter Apple Watch is the equivalent. There's a big difference in price though between those two, something to consider. Right off bat, like I said, the 40 millimeter aluminum, I absolutely love this thing. And the biggest reason is because of how light it is. This one is 40 grams. We're talking 63 grams. And if you go with the um, 42 millimeter version of the Galaxy Watch, we're talking 49 grams. So 49 grams, 63 for this bad boy. And then we got 40 grams right here. Hence why I love it super light especially with this sport loop the sport loop adds little to no weight which means my wrist is weightless big thing to think about and i love this watch but for everyday practicality as far as weight goes i'm giving it to the apple watch hands down and even if you go with the 44 millimeter or even at the stainless steel you are still coming in lighter than this bad boy right here trust me matters when you wear something on your wrist as much as you do with these smartwatches. Now, water resistance, they're both water resistant. Uh, the Galaxy Watch is IP68. The Apple Watch, they say up to 50 meters. The tedious part about a smartwatch is having to charge it consistently, but this varies among the different smartwatches. Now between these two, this varies a lot, but there's different versions, you gotta keep that in mind. Now when we're going with the Apple Watch, how Apple advertises it is up to 18 hours. It obviously lasts longer, but you don't want to have false advertisement, which is what Apple doesn't want, which is why they only say up to 18 hours, which is a safe bet for them. Although you definitely get 24 hours plus with an Apple Watch. Now this bad boy right here, the 46 millimeter version, which has the larger battery of the Galaxy Watch, you get <laughs> easily four days. And if you go with the smaller, what is it, the 42 millimeter? The battery is significantly smaller. I would say probably safely three days. You could probably squeeze four if you're light on your adjustments and so forth. And even if you get light on your adjustments with this Galaxy Watch, you can definitely get a week. And if you do watch only, which I don't know why anybody would because there's no point, it's a smart watch. So, so why would you do just watch only? It goes up to like 30 days or whatever, but that feature is kind of pointless. You gonna spend all that money to have just a regular watch? No. So as far as battery life, hands down, Samsung Galaxy Watch takes that by a long shot. But I will say this, I'm not angry at the fact that I have to charge my Apple Watch as often as I do. And part of the reason is because this is practical. I like the lightness and the weight of it. I love this bad boy. I like the chunkiness and the beefiness of it. It's very swagful, very uh, traditional, very classy. And the stainless steel watch, from uh, the Apple, you get that same chunk classiness and swag. You know what I'm saying? For real, for real, it's very swaggy. Now these both have OLED screens, so either way you go, you, you are getting OLED goodness, but I have to be honest, I have to be totally transparent, the OLED display on Apple Watch is better. Oh, I know, I'm shocked too, because Samsung is known for displays, known for knocking it out the park when it comes to smart devices and OLED displays, but somehow Apple, has got the upper hand on this one. I don't know how. It's so much more sharper and crispier than this Galaxy Watch. It's facts. Another thing to think about is internal 
memory storage. You only get four gigabytes on the Galaxy Watch. So you only have four gigabytes to throw music and things on here, say if you wanna go for a run without your phone. On the Apple Watch, on the other hand, you're getting 16 gigabytes, which means you're getting quadruple. Yes, I said it quadruple what you get on the Galaxy Watch. So if you're somebody who likes to load on your own music and so forth, as well as you got Apple Music on the Apple Watch, now with the Galaxy Watch to help supplement, I guess that shortcoming in the storage, you can use Spotify. But you, I, you obviously have to have the LTE version. So as far as internal memory, the Apple Watch wins that category, boom, hands down. Now, as far as both of these, when it comes to payment options, they're both NFC. Now, if you get something like the Gear S3 from Samsung, you get that MST technology. Sorry, stutter. <laughs> the MST technology allows you to pay at magnetic strip uh, terminals without them even having NFC. So they'll be like, whoa, it doesn't work. You hit them, boop, and it, it will, it'll work. But that is a fading technology. But for the next, I guess, year or two or so, who knows, however long it takes for the US to convert, the MST is still available, but it's not here on the Galaxy Watch. So, Neck and neck, NFC, they both will work. Wherever Apple Pay and Samsung Pay is accepted, you are good. Now, when it comes to apps, yes, when it comes to apps, a lot of people always ask me when I used to do my Samsung uh, watch videos about apps. Samsung runs a uh, OS called Tizen. Now, Tizen is very limited in apps. A lot of de developers, I'm, I'm just stuttering today. <laughs> a lot of developers have not hopped on board with Tizen creating their apps for that platform. It's almost as if it's forgotten. Literally, uh, Android's platform and Apple's platform is the most developed platform as far as smartwatch apps go. Like when I hit, if I hit this crown, look at all those apps. I haven't even pursued the apps and went into the app store for the Apple Watch apps and searched for them. This is just the ones that it was like, hey, we have apps for the watch from some of the apps that are on your phone. Do you want us to add them? I was like, yeah, that's when I set it up. Automatically did it, boom but I haven't even gotten into the app store. And we all know when it comes to iOS, that's where the most best apps are. So when it comes to apps, hands down, the Apple Watch is gonna be the win. There's another thing that comes into play between these two things that some people might get them for, and that's health. I'm not super crazy big on the health kick as far as using my smartwatches for health, but I totally understand it. Like, this is my first time having an Apple Watch and I'm embracing the whole ring thing. So I'm closing rings on a daily and it has encouragement for you, but I'm pretty active. I'm like smashing those rings, you know what I'm saying? Not to toot my own horn. I might flash a couple stats on here, you know what I mean? Let you see what I'll be doing here on my day. You know, I get it in. Um, the Samsung watch, it tracks things as well. It has a Samsung Fit, I forget what it's called, but they have their own app. They'll track your steps and so forth. Heart rate and all that stuff is similar between the two. But, you know, Apple Watch is known for their health tracking, so they are far more developed and far more better at it. Something that Samsung Health has over the Apple Watch is the sleep tracking. And the big reason I think is not on the Apple Watch is because of the battery. Most people, you have to charge your Apple Watch at night, so you're not able to wear it and track your sleeping. Samsung has a longer battery life. You can sleep with this big, <laughs> hefty thing and track your sleeping. Now, I would do it for naps. I wouldn't do it for overnight. I don't sleep much. I'm grinding. I'm doing all these videos and so forth. So when I lay down, I like to get at least like, you know, a couple hours. So it will have that information for you. As far as fitness goes, even though the Samsung has the sleep tracking, it's so much more developed, so many more health apps when it comes to the Apple Watch. So Apple Watch wins the fitness category. Cha -ching. And when it comes to, to price, we all know the Samsung watch is way more affordable than the Apple Watch. Now, I, hold on, I know I said way more, but technically if you got the 40 millimeter Bluetooth version only versus the Samsung Bluetooth version only, we're talking 349 or 329 versus 400 starting price for Bluetooth. Now this is the LTE version. That's where things get a little different. Uh, LTE on the Samsung is, let me take a peek at the notes, you know what I'm saying? Starting off at 399 and for the 42 millimeter, 379. On Apple Watch, it's starting off at 499. Yeah. So there is a difference in price. Yes, the Samsung watch is more affordable. So it gets the win in the price category. Now we got all that spec stuff about the way. Let me talk about user experience. Number one, if you're gonna do a Galaxy watch, you better do it with a Galaxy phone. You better have you a Samsung phone. That's the best way to combo it out. 
Now, I think it worked. As a matter of fact, I don't think. I know it works with Android devices, but there's something about the Samsung Watch, I gotta tell you. It interacts with its own native Samsung apps better than it does with the Android apps. I like to use Android messaging over Samsung messaging, but if you use Samsung messaging, I think it's more favorable. Same thing with the clock. If you use Samsung's clock, you know what I mean? You'll get your alert for your alarm and you're able to disable it from your wrist. With Apple, obviously, it's just one system. It's iOS, iOS, you know what I'm saying? How I look at this watch is literally like they took this phone and laid it on your wrist, shrunk it, and this is the perfect sidekick for your iOS device. So, if you're gonna do either one of these, you gotta do it right. Now, yes, you can do the Galaxy Watch on iOS. I've done that. I'm a stubborn person to the point where I like the traditional watch look. I like the watch faces that I would even use or attempt to use this on iOS. Yes, it's very, very limited. You lose a lot of the functions that you would have if you use this with a Galaxy device. I'll admit to that. That's why I say the best way to do it if you're gonna do the Galaxy Watch is with a Galaxy phone. But if you wanna be stubborn and do it with iOS, it is doable and compatible. It's just limited. You get all your notifications, you'll see everything. It'll look nice on the watch face. Um, yeah, I use an app called Watch Maker and uh, yeah, it's, it's limited. Now the iPhone, as far as customization, is limited. You know what I mean? There's no third party watch faces like there are. With the Galaxy Watch. The Galaxy Watch has all of these nice, you know, if you haven't seen my customizing the Galaxy Watch video, go ahead and check that out. Hit the little thing, go look at it. You can get a lot of swagful Rolex, Tudor, Breitling faces, and you can have your watch look very traditional. It's also, with the traditional watch, is more incognito. With the Apple Watch, it's more like, hey, he has an Apple Watch. Which ain't, it's not the worst thing, you know what I mean? You know, some people, it's really all about the stunt, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you know, you know, yeah, yeah. But user experience is what I really want to get into. Let me let me cut the BS and let me be real. Let me be authentic. I love the Galaxy Watch with the Galaxy phone. I love that experience. But I love even more the Apple Watch with the Apple phone. That experience right there. I'm just saying, that experience trumps this experience. Let me tell you why. It's far more developed, far more fluent. It's, I mean, look, did you guys not see how legendary the health is with an Apple Watch? Like literally, I've seen headline after headline of the Apple Watch saving lives. And it's like a kind of joke, but it's really real and it's really serious. I think Apple has figured it out with that health side. Now, I'm talking more than just health. I'm talking about the user interface. When I'm looking at notifications on this thing, the square design makes so much sense because it's like I'm on my phone, as well as my interaction with my notifications are far more in depth than with the Galaxy Watch. You can reply to text messages on the Galaxy Watch if you're using you know, the right stuff. You can reply. You can reply on the Apple Watch as well. But there's also cool things like I get a lot of YouTube notifications, obviously. I'm able to get inside of those YouTube notifications. I'm able to scroll through all of them. You know what I mean? I'm able to open the banner just like how you have iOS 12. It comes up in a stacked notification. I'm able to open those notifications on my watch and flip through them all. I love that. And my notifications and my comments matter to me. As you know, if you comment, I try my best to respond to all of them, except for the ignorant ones. If it's too ignorant or if I don't have the time, I'm gonna hit you with a heart though. Another thing that I love is that new Infograph watch face is serious. You got all of these complications. You have everything in one space, one spot. Tizen has all of those things, but it's at a turn of a dial. On the Apple Watch, it's literally at a turn of a wrist. And that's the difference. I got my weather, I have my weather conditions, I have the high to the low right there. I have my calendar, I have my watch power, how much battery is left. I have my rings, my activity rings, I can see them in real time. I have access to music, whether it's on my watch or if I'm controlling my phone for music. I have my alarms and I have my reminders and they're all there. Oh, one more thing, I have my events for my calendar right there. It's, it's jam packed. Like I'm turning my wrist and I'm seeing all of the things that I need to see for the day. And these are customizable complications, meaning you can get in each one and make it to your preference. 
love it. Absolutely love it. This I love because it looks like a traditional watch. I'm blending with the crowd. I'm not standing out for having a smart watch. And it's very classy, very swag. Love it. This, on the other hand, everyone knows what it is. I get it. That's cool. Kind of not cool, but cool. Now, it's so light, so convenient, so good. I love the lightness of this. I love how small and compact it is. I love the fact that I don't feel the watch on my wrist. That matters. I didn't know it mattered because I like these big, chunky, heavy watches. But now I know that I prefer a lighter, more stealth of a watch experience on my wrist. Now that's me. And even if I wanted the big, bulky stainless steel feel of a watch, I get the stainless steel. A uh, gold boy with the Milanese band, you know what I mean? Swag on deck, options on deck, user experience on deck. I don't wanna make this long. I just wanna tell you what I've chosen from a user experience point, as well as some of, a lot of the, <laughs> the specs are in the favor of the Apple Watch experience with iOS, with an iPhone, hands down. This didn't get left in the dust. This is right there with it, but my preference is iOS. <laughs> Hopefully I didn't hit my mic too hard. My preference is iOS. My preference is the Apple Watch. My preference is here. But that doesn't mean that this is terrible. This is great. This is dope. So all my Samsung Knights, Android, whatever you call, this combo right here is A1. But the better user experience, the more developed experience of a smartwatch is with the Apple Watch Series 4. And I'm glad that I waited till Series 4 to get the Apple Watch because Apple, they got it. They got it, they figured it out. They know how to make a smart watch have a purpose. And it, this watch has a purpose. And it's great, it's awesome. I'm gonna stop rambling on. I know the iSheet comments is coming. The Apple fanboy comments is coming. I'm here for this. I'm here for all of this. This is Apple season, baby. This is Samsung season, baby. The Note 9, beast of a phone. XS Max, beast of a phone. Oh yeah, I gotta get to the impressions on this bad boy. Coming up next, I'm out. Peace.